Hey everybody, uh, welcome, welcome to episode three. Hang on, this might not work. Hold tight. Hmm. Hopefully this Wi-Fi is okay. Let me know if it's not. And uh, I can try and switch the Wi-Fi. In fact, I might do that and come back to you. Hold tight. If it appears and it's not going to appear, this is all we've got. Hopefully this works tonight. I'm really excited actually because tonight we are doing episode three in the Stories That Keep You Stuck series. And I'm so excited because tonight we're going to talk about something that doesn't often get spoken about when we're all a little bit, sorry, I'm just setting up Instagram here as well, when we're all a little bit, um, you know, rah-rah, life is amazing, uh, when we start to recognise that all our stuff is stories and I'll do a quick recap for you if this is only the first episode that you're seeing. And uh, and we're going to talk about how this affects other people and because it's something that we really need to talk about. I'm going to share two particular stories. Hey, gorgeous Christy, how are you? Um, thanks for joining me. I'm really just like faffing the frig about. Hold on, I'm just going to be... I'm just doing a little bit of, oh, there you go, there's an arm. Um, so I've put on a bit of a lip for you tonight because I obviously did not wash my hair. Hey, Michaela. Gee, I love seeing these familiar names. It's like we're all here. It's like we're all here. Hey, Karen. Hey, Beth. A first one of the series I've got to live. Mine's still, yeah, right, I know. There's a lot of stuff going on with Jim Fortin, the guy who, um, has been who I've been working with over the last few months and has totally changed my life. And if you if you missed last week, uh, if you missed the episode two, I did a live here and then I directed you towards a live, uh, an interview that I did with a, a fellow called Jim Fortin and uh, it'll blow your mind. I have received the craziest feedback from that people with light bulbs going off all over town. And it's so good. Oh, when you when your tea bag straw like thingy goes into the uh the oh well. Love tea. I'm loving love tea, you guys. Uh okay, so I'm just gonna get started. I'm just gonna go live over there on Instagram as well. So just say hello, Instagram. I am on Facebook Live, but I'm here with you tonight as well. And we're going to be talking about, yeah, Alicia, the interview was amazing, wasn't it? Like I've been with that guy week in, week out, uh, and he has totally busted me out of any story that I might have had going on. I mean, it's a continual process to recognise that everything we think we basically have made up. And a lot of the times they're things that are keeping us small. So tonight what we're going to be doing is talking about how when, when we start to kind of shift, when we start to go, oh, hang on a minute, maybe this isn't what I want, uh, maybe this isn't ultimate happiness for me or uh, I want different things. I just realised that all these stories are keeping me stuck and small and I don't want that anymore. How that ends up affecting the people around you and how we can be feeling as amazing as we want but we really struggle because of how that can make people around us feel. So our stories ending up affecting other people and their stories coming back at us. We're going to dive into this tonight. Um, welcome, Tammy. Making a live, although juggling, cooking and eating dinner. Amazing. You're a legend. We can do anything if we can do that. Um, Kristen, uh, Alicia, okay, Beth, awesome. I'm so glad you guys are here. Thank you for coming. And I think 
you're in for a bit of a treat tonight and I'd like this to be a bit more of a conversation. So, hey, Cara, I'd like us to talk about this because I know that I'm probably not the only one who has experienced um, this phenomenon. So this phenomenon of other people's stories kind of being reflected back at us and it tends to happen I don't know if you feel this too, but when things start to feel good and when you start to say you feel great, hey, Camilla Jane Ayres, nice to see you here. When you start to feel really good, sometimes that's actually way more upsetting to the people around you than if you were feeling good. I don't know if anybody else recognises that. Is it the same for everybody else, that you sort of have the people in your life who are really triggered when you start to feel good because that's what this whole series has been about this whole series has been about waking you up to recognize like in the first year the first episode we talked about the fact that most things this is what i've been realizing right most things um hey next door neighbor almost um <laughs> that uh that mostly we're living our life um, on autopilot. We're living our life, we're making decisions, we're getting into relationships, out of relationships, we're parenting our children, we're making decisions at work, we're doing all these things based on truths or things that we think we know of ourselves, but they're actually just stories that are made up. And so I went through in that first episode to really help you see that, you know, what you take as truth it's actually, it's usually not. <laughs> it's a really confronting thing to realise when you're like, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you actually mean I'm not a this? Or what do you mean my reality doesn't necessarily, like that doesn't, that isn't like dictating all the decisions that I need to make for my life? Or what do you mean that what I've created is, like what my life is was totally created by me and probably from outdated stories that I had of myself that I've just bought through my whole freaking life. Hang on a minute. So episode one was a bit of a wake up. Then last week we dived deep into the whole story that I've got no time because I see that all the time. Um, I know I have said it a bajillion times. I've got no time for this. I've got no time. I can't. If I could, I would. Or blah, blah, blah. Or it's easy if you don't have children or you're not running your own business. Or wait, wait, wait. Like, yeah, when we used to, you know, not have anything else to do except for just go to brunch and blah, blah. All the freaking stories. So we busted the I've got no time story in episode two because I brought in one of the guys who's helped me see that everything's a story, Jim Fortin. If you have not seen that interview, you need to go and watch that interview. I've been working with Jim since February and he's, he's completely changed my, my life. And you know what? I've been sharing a bit of this stuff on my socials and I see, I can see that I trigger people when I'm feeling good. So for a long time, you know, like I was all the chaos, all the mess for people who have followed. Give me a like if you've been around for a while. If you've been around for a little while, um, let me know that you're here. Uh, people who've seen me over the course of these few years, well, I mean, I, I first um, started a blog like right at the end of 2012. So I've been around for a little while. And for most of those years, I was a hot mess, like a true hot mess. Like everyone was just watching me. Um, um, hey Jules, uh, everyone's just watching me basically be completely like, I, I was, I was just, a, I was pretty much a mess. It was the really young years, like four, three kids in under four years living in interstate. So no family around. Um, and just, I had very low expectations of myself, like in terms of, of, of life kind of in general. Um, but but I was actually really trying to achieve a lot as well um, in terms of the food I was feeding my family, in terms of, you know, building a business and being able to serve the people who came into my programs and all that sort of thing. Anyway, 
So, and the past 18 months have been particularly intense for me personally. Um, we were like, it has, I have not been through a harder time of my life. Like I thought when the kids were little was intense, but what we've just experienced as a family um, with my husband's health over the last little while has, I mean, I just, I can't even, I don't even have words for it yet. It's just been, it's been huge. And uh, um, and now I feel a little bit like I'm coming out of it. Like I, and I feel like I've learned so many things about myself as we've gone through. And now I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not like, I, I don't even recognize Lisa two years ago. I've been doing a lot of work on my stories and suddenly you can see that that starts to trigger people. And that's what we're talking about tonight, if you've just joined. Um, I love Small Steps to Whole Foods. Cara, Small Steps to Whole Foods still exists in the membership. Um, I love that program too. And um, and I love all the women, thousands of women went through that, like almost 4,000 women. So I've loved, um, uh, yeah, anyway, what am I, now I'm just reminiscing. <laughs> But uh, I, I have, I realized, you know, like a lot of the reason why I'm talking about this stuff now, a lot of the reason why I created um, the Small Steps Back to You program was because people kept coming in wanting to change the food that they ate. And they're like, I'll just do food differently. But they kept coming up against themselves. Like the amount of stories we have about, about our food, about our weight, about who we are based on the food choices we make is astounding. And I think I've heard them all. And I'm like, we need to have a discussion, number one, about, uh, you know, the stories that we're making up about ourselves, like they're ruining our lives. Like we're, we're keeping ourselves committed to stories that don't serve us. And then, uh, and then also this whole concept of having no time and being overwhelmed literally all the time like we need to talk about this and I, I because people want to change the food they eat but they come into it thinking I'll oh, just do food differently without thinking that they need to be a different person in order to eat the different foods or create some time to prepare so a lot of my my work then kind of became around the mindset that we have around this stuff about how to literally create hours of time but also throughout that Become someone who values creating space in your life because unless we're doing that, unless we're actually being people who genuinely like dig ourselves, like give ourselves a thumbs up, unless we're becoming people and being people who um, value our own health and actually make it a priority, then we'll never change the food that we eat. We will just, it, it's just like, it, it doesn't happen like that. Or if it does, you do it for a short amount of time. So that's why I've always done things in small steps to give our brains and our identity time to come to terms with being someone who actually eats whole foods, being someone who is less overwhelmed. And I, I have always seen the value in this for people because if you become that person, then the eating thing takes care of itself and the journey kind of continues when we're not flogging ourselves and telling ourselves nasty stories. And so that is why I now talk about this stuff as a matter of priority because we cannot talk about food unless we talk about you, the person, the stories that you've got playing in your mind, the way that you've designed your day and your life and knowing that you have a choice about it. So I know for sure that it triggers people when I tell them that they have a choice. Like it tells them, it, it triggers them because they're telling themselves they don't. Hey, Anissa, uh, it, it's really hard for people because they're, they're stuck in their story that nothing can change and people get a bit people get a bit cross at us. So I'm going to tell you two stories right now about people being triggered um, by and, and stories basically keeping us stuck involving other people. So the first one involves my husband. 
and this business, right? So there was a time, so I, I mean, <laughs> Nick is an artist who's basically been living an aerospace engineer's life. So he's been a cubicle guy. Hey, Lorraine. Uh, and, and, um, and it hasn't made him very happy over the years, is an understatement. But, um, but was doing what he thought he needed to do. Like he got his aerospace engineering degree and because uh, he can and, um, and started doing the work. And then we had babies and, and then more babies and we kind of, the babies kind of came quite quickly. I was like, hey, we're in this stage of life. Let's just, let's just knock it out. I was pretty uh, lucky to have sleeping babes. Um, hey, Tammy. Hey, Rachel. Uh, hey, Liz. Hey, guys. Tessa. Um, and, but he, so he was doing the things to keep our family with a roof over our head and, and all that stuff. But he was unhappy. And uh, and so what ended up happening was I was like, I was really annoyed. We, we left Sydney. We were there for five years. The idea was to get back to Melbourne. We had two kids under two. Couldn't get back to Melbourne. Uh, there were no jobs there, like aerospace engineering, obviously quite a niche <laughs> industry. And so we went to, it was like Perth or Brisbane, and we chose Perth. Or we chose Brisbane. Um, and so we went to Brisbane and when we arrived there, I was a bit bummed because I was like, oh, this is not really where I wanted to be. I really had wanted to get back to Melbourne. And I thought to myself, I don't want to, I don't want to always have to go where the work is. Surely, you know, I've got to get back in the workforce. You know, I'd never really had any particularly big jobs. I was all, I was just kind of building up. I was, I was doing some freelance work before I had my, um, my son, but I'd never really had any big jobs, but I had big ideas and I've made a lot of stuff happen in the places that I worked at. Anyway, uh, I, uh, what ended up happening was I started this blog. I then just kept going with it, it sort of started to get momentum. I was like, oh. I could actually be helpful for people. This is nice. They're making my recipes. This is fun. And then at the end of 2014, I launched uh, a little, it was the 21 day whole foods challenge. I had no idea what I was doing, none whatsoever. And then on the back of that, people loved it. On the back of that small steps to whole foods, the eight week program was born. And it was the first time that I thought, oh my gosh, I might actually be good at something people are really responding. I'm really helping them. And I just got an email a few days ago from a woman who has been a part of the Small Steps community uh, for, oh, sorry, <laughs> the rental period for Chipmunks, the sequel is finished. <laughs> it just came up on my screen. Uh, so, um and now what was I saying? Yeah, it was this, it was this awesome feeling like, oh, my gosh, I can I can earn some money by actually really helping people. That's what I was saying. I got an email from someone who's basically done everything that I've ever created. And she was I mean, I woke up with a crying hangover on Monday morning after seeing the email, sneakily checking my emails on Sunday night, which I don't really do on the weekends. But I was bawling because I felt like. I was like, oh, my God, it's all been worth it. All my late nights, all my self-doubt, all the insecurities, all I've wanted to do the whole time was just to help people. And she's saying that I have really helped her. Like she was really, it was just the loveliest email. And uh, and what had been happening over the years was I was getting this sense. I was really loving what I was doing. But you can imagine what that's doing to someone, a partner, who really feels like he's trapped, you know, in the story of that like, there's nothing else I can do, I have to do this. It's so, you know, and then and then would start to get a bit weird around me. You know, I was working my butt cheeks off, as my kids would say, uh, you know, um, building a business, serving the small steps community, working out how the heck to do all of this stuff. And I I really had no idea what I was doing, but I was it was a buzz. It was a real buzz to be doing work that 
felt like it was making a difference in the world and it was highlighting for Nick how he felt so unaligned and he was triggered a lot of the time and he was never nasty always my number one supporter but um oh, thank you Sonia uh and I and so it was it but it got to the point where I thought maybe I shouldn't be doing this maybe it's maybe it's I'm it hit Maybe it would just be easier for me to not keep going with myself, move through my stories about what's possible for Lisa Cordoff because that's all this journey has been is just like a knocking down of previous beliefs. Like I, I couldn't do that. Surely not. Mm, suddenly I could. <laughs> and, um, and, and so it's just been this constant, huge amount of personal development. Anyone else here who's running their own thing, you can give me a high five. You could say, press like to say that this journey is not for the faint hearted, but it was showing things up for him. And I was like, maybe I should just sit back. This is making him too uncomfortable. This is making him too sad. I don't want to be the reason why he's sad. You know, Lisa, come on. You know, this is me being a complete pleaser, someone who's like, don't, uh, I don't want to upset anyone. And so I, oh, thank you, Deb. That's a beautiful thing to say. Uh, I, um, I thought to myself, and I want you to think this too. I want you to think that if you rising into your own amazingness, oh, Insta keeps pausing. I'm sorry. Whoops. Oh, hopefully it fixes itself. Uh, that I'm on Facebook Live if you guys want to head over there too. Um, if, you, if you're rising, if you're feeling good, if you're busting through your stories to a life that feels much better to you, is triggering for the people around you, you got to keep going. you got to for you. And it was so uh, upsetting for me to realise that I needed to let his stories be his stories about what was possible and what wasn't and I just needed to keep going. Um, I just needed to keep on with myself. I needed to keep growing because what was I going to do? And and I want to ask you all these people, we come up against the, peop the people who love us Oftentimes, we can we can want to mould to fit where they are, their expectations of us. This happens with immediate family a lot and it can happen with our partners when they're like, hang on, this is not what I signed up for or this is not where I thought we were going or what does this mean for me if you're off being, you know, that loving life or, or moving out of your stuff, which is totally possible, by the way. It triggers the frig out of them and we have to just keep going. I kept thinking with Nick, like he's either going to come with me or he's not and I've got to be cool with either because what am I going to do for my life? Like we can't keep playing small, making excuses about the things that we want or living our like sole purpose or whatever you're going to call it to protect other people. We can't apologise for who we are. Uh, we can't stop the good stuff. We can't play it down. I think there's so many women just keeping a lid on themselves and I thought to myself, I'm going to keep going and I'm just going to trust with all my heart this is all going to work out for the best. And I just kept a vision of us in my head. I just I just held this vision. Even amongst the worst times, I held this vision of us. And what I am what I am starting to live now is the realisation of that vision. And he came with me, but he kind of broke in order to come. And it is the most heartbreaking thing but the most beautiful thing when we don't let our stories of who 
people around us expect us to be get in the way of us living our dreams and our potential and our purpose, whatever that means to you. I know in the in the Small Steps Back to You program, there's been lots of women who've gone through that and have gone, oh, my gosh, I'm not in the right profession or, oh, my gosh, I must, I think that uh, I want to go back and study something or, you know, do something completely different because for most of our lives we probably haven't been honest with ourselves about what we really want. That's a problem. And then when we do, for people who do start to step into that, it can be triggering for people around you who are kind of used to you in struggle town or who are used to just having a little bit of a bitch and moan with you or who are used to you, um, you know, even if it's being overweight or something like that. Sometimes I find when we when we start to kind of create l like the selves of us that always existed but we've kind of kept shadowed with all the story story stories about why we can't why we shouldn't blah blah blah. when that starts to break free and we start to actually do things that make us feel great i mean the small steps membership is filled with people who know that they trigger other people because of the food that they feed their family and we've just got to be cool with that because what are we going to do spend our whole lives playing down for other people no thanks I have a friend, so this is the second story. I have a friend and uh, she wants to do some travel for her work. It would be amazingly beneficial for her, like hugely, a huge opportunity. She has kids and her husband works um, a lot, like kind of a big job, so it's a big deal for her to leave. And um, um, everyone, yes, you guys, um, you're not alone, Lisa. Uh, yes, Tom, Sonia. Okay, I'm glad that's resonating. Um, and so what? what's happening with this friend is she's actually too scared to uh, contact her um, or talk to her partner about, wanting to go away she is scared that her rising is going to make him really upset and he won't understand it number one she hasn't even had a conversation with him about that yeah hashtag keep rising um thanks beautiful karen uh and uh and she, her story is that it's just gonna um be really upsetting she was sort of reaching out saying how have you how do you go or how does nick go when you travel you know i go to the the states a few times a year i run a, a business mastermind um, with my friend carly and we have two retreats in australia each year the small steps members want a retreat i've got to get onto that <laughs> um so i go away a fair bit and and she was like how does how does nick cope with that and I was like, well, you know what? I just kind of, he, I got, he was on board and I needed to talk to him in a language that he understood in terms of why this was worthwhile. Uh, but then it, it was just like, how, how do we make this work? And sometimes, you know, mum would come and, and help out or whatever, uh, or his mum. But he found ways to make it work and I needed to not protect him and let it be his. But I just find it funny that she made up all these stories because she's feeling so good about her work. She's getting all these new opportunities. She's got access to, to mentors and people who are really at the top of their game. She can, she can have all that. And she's worried about what her husband is going to say and how it might disrupt his life for a week. And it's like, oh, my God, hang on a minute. Hang on. Let's just, let's just get a grip here. Everything can be figured out. <laughs> uh, but number one, you're making up a story that he's going to be upset about this and you haven't even spoken to him about it yet. Let's just get real. Everything is interpretation. We are interpreting. So what happens is when you start to feel really good and then other people start to be like, you know, well, easy for you or, you know, I don't know what's happened to you or something, or you feel people kind of drift away or whatever, 
And um, what is happening is they are interpreting you, your rising or your empowerment or your choices, whatever you want to call it, they're interpreting it through their glasses. So they're, they're wearing these, you know, Nick and I always used to call it glasses of expectation. I'd be like, take off your glasses of expectation. There's something new going on around here or you're, you're reacting to me the same way you always do when actually this is something completely different. Glasses of expectation off, please. But we all wear them. We're all just interpreting interpreting stuff. So I know when I post some stuff out there on social media, people are just making their own stories up about who I am, about my life, about my marriage, about my kids, about the food we eat. You know, everyone's making up their own stories. That's totally cool. But the thing that I have really come to terms with is that people will always judge. Humans judge they always will. They're going to keep judging. They will judge you no matter what you do. So what are you going to do? Are you just going to sit there and let people be triggered around you and shrink back? Are you going to try to make it okay for them that you're like a fit freak because you've been doing like CrossFit three times a week for the last six months and then you're suddenly going to be like, oh, I still eat hot chips. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to do that. You don't have to make things okay for other people. People are going to judge you. They always will. So what are you going to do? And I'm really, really, really passionate about this topic. Um, so easy not to do certain things because of the reasons we convince ourselves. Yes, because of the stories that you're creating, Alicia. Those stories are just it's just illusions, it's beliefs, it's it's not real. And we end up like we're building a life just based on these subconscious stories. We are trapped in our overwhelm because of these stories. We tell ourselves that nothing can change. We tell ourselves that the people around us can't cope if we grow and change. In like without a doubt. The food thing is so huge because, you know, changing the food that you eat is hugely triggering for other people, especially your partner. Sometimes I say to small steppers, like it's easier to get your kids on board than it is to get your partner on board <laughs> because they're like, they've are they just had way too many years of, of the certain habits. And also we don't come to things at the same time. You know, when you've come to a decision about how things are going to be, and I was talking to Nick um, he's out tonight, but I was talking to Nick um, earlier about this episode. I'm like, is it cool if I tell the story? And he said, yeah, tell the story, but just tell them that I just, I wasn't ready to hear it. I wasn't ready. You were on your path. You were going for it. And I just, I literally wasn't there. I couldn't, I couldn't hear. It was like white noise when I'd be like, you know, everything's going to be amazing and, you know, we just need to be happy and bring a good vibration and like attracts blah. And he's just like, just like, okay. <laughs> but he just, he was not there. He wasn't ready to, to hear it then. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll put that out there. And he's like, I always did support you, even although I was grumpy. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. You did. He did. He did a great job uh, at that. But, you know, I knew that I wasn't making his life easier. It would have been way easier for me to just stay, you know, un unhappy or, um, you know, selling thermomixes or something. Uh, you know, like you think about the, the you, there is a, a particularly patriarchal society that we live in and I think our men are really, uh, well, I know that my man is is really attempting to shift expectations of what it means to be a man and a father uh, and a husband. You know, this stuff is shifting constantly and we are a generation of women who are trying to move through our own shit so we can actually feel happy. We know that what's going on feels very, very wrong. We're tired. We're depressed. We're stressed. I mean, overwhelm and busy, they're just like words that are used all the time. We're, we don't have time for things that matter. 
If you saw my Facebook Live the other day on the back of the post about happiness, we don't even know what makes us happy. Like, that's the problem. So we know we're starting to kind of, our eyes are opening up to this stuff. Click like if you agree, if you're like, yeah, I'm feeling it. I am feeling like this is not the way it needs to be. Surely this is not modern motherhood, modern womanhood. What have we freaking created here? And how do we change it? And that is the whole reason I created the Small Steps Back to You program. And it's the whole reason why I'm talking about the stories here. And the last free series I did was called, um, was about overwhelm. Because if we don't, if we don't start to recognize that we've got a choice, if we don't start to recognize, and you know, I know that's a hugely triggering thing for me to say. I know it because people have written to me and they're like, well, you know, I've got this, 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 and this easy, you know, easy for you. I don't have a choice. I'm like, yep. I used to think that too. And now I can kind of see it. Now my light bulbs have gone off. And if you need light bulb moments, watch the Jim Fortin interview. It's easy to see when people are stuck in their stories now because it's like our circumstances dictate what, what we decide for ourselves. And our circumstances are just a reflection of where we are right now. That, that can change. It does change. It changes in an instant. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if you actually can hear me all the time. Okay. Carly, absolutely major shifts. Right. I'm sure you were talking about the, um, the gym interview. So the fact that I have been, uh, working with Jim Fortin means that I have just, uh, Okay, so so if you want to, if you're considering joining the program Small Steps Back to You, I'm going to put a link in. You got to come to the webinar tomorrow night about replacing online time with me time because this is where I get really practical. So these chats are awesome, but tomorrow night there is a webinar. I am going live with all the slides, with all the work. You get a worksheet with everything you need in order to literally add hours to your week. I'll show you how to create hours, extra hours in your week for all the people who think that they've got no time. And it's a great, great workshop. You should totally come to that and I should totally have the link. Oopsie. Um, I will put it in here at the end. But what I want you to know is that the, the small says back to you program, which I should, um, which I'm launching um, right at the end of that. Uh, and there's bonuses for people who do turn up live. So you, you do want to get to this, this, um, is that I've been, I've actually upgraded and added a few next level trainings to that program. So based on the work that I've done with Jim, so I'm actually rewriting a lot of it. Um, very similar, um, that, that's still the same worksheets and process that has worked for hundreds and hundreds of women to help them have big breakthroughs. But I'm also adding a few next level trainings because I, we've got to talk about this stuff. Anyway, I'm just dropping that. I shouldn't really even be saying it. I should wait till it's actually open and ready, but the doors to that will be open only for a week. So be watching out for that. If you want to dive deeper with this stuff with me, but tonight was really about how like we need to check ourselves sometimes we need to check ourselves that we're not kind of toning down we're not speaking up because of the way that us starting to feel better can trigger other people because it's going to it happens you know people want you to stay who they know of you they they want the predictability no one really actually like News flash. no one really likes change. No one's less like, can I just please, like you, the person who I'm at, what I want you to do. Oh, Karen, you're an absolute legend. Thank you. Um, yeah, go there to the Me Time workshop. It'll be, it's awesome tomorrow night. It's next level. If you think this is fun, that's next level. Uh, so um, what I want you to, what I want you to think about is that as you grow, as you evolve, as you should, as you damn should, because that's what you're here to do in this lifetime. Like we're not here to just do day by day by day by day and just survive. 
But that is not what we are here to do. You've got important work to do. You, you, you are absolutely here for a reason. Are you feeling your best self? Do you show up for yourself in the best way? Have you taken like full responsibility for your life and what you have in it and what you don't? Like these, I know that these are big questions, but like, this is the stuff that matters, you guys. And I am actually going to be, uh, I'm sharing all the things right now. I, uh, I'm actually going to be relaunching um, my podcast as a new um, and a new TV show. Uh, um, oops. Uh, very soon. And this is the stuff, you guys, I started working. Um, I started this whole thing because I was confused about food and I was just like, can someone just tell me what to feed my damn family? What, what, what do we eat? Like, what is healthy? And so I just started interviewing the people who I thought knew what to eat. And and everyone, and, and I, that's my favourite thing to do is interview people. Um, and if you've been around for a while, you probably know that. But where I'm at right now is like the in, food interviews locked and loaded. Need anything to do with food, you just head straight on into the Small Steps membership when I open the doors to that. But what I want to interview people about right now is this stuff. I want to interview them about stories, about like women's overwhelm. I want to interview them about leadership, like what it means to be showing up in our lives um, as the best version of ourselves. How do we do that? How do we do that in the context of modern motherhood? How do we do that in the context of, you know, like big mortgages or feeling like you, you're not, um, like you don't have choice? Uh, with aging parents, how do we do it in this age of hyper connectivity, but loneliness? How do we do it? How do we grow? How do we evolve? Who are these women who are doing it and making it look so easy? I want to talk to them, and I hope that this is interesting for you guys because this is really what I feel called to be talking about right now. And what I am interested in as a woman. Uh, so I feel that, um, yes, now to practice. Um, what I feel is that, that you can probably expect a lot more of this type of conversation because what I'm interested in, I can help you with food. I can always help you with food. Um, there is so much food information out there. But to, to help evolve and grow you as a woman, to stepping into her biggest, best self, oh, my God, it just gives me shivers all over. So I'm going to be finding the people and interviewing people who've been helping me on this journey um, that I've been on the past while and, and bringing them to you. There's a lot. If you're in the entrepreneur or online business community, you can often get access to lots of people who are doing really, really cool stuff. But I'm like, but who's... You know, we need to be having this conversation at a far more general level because what I see in the Small Steps membership, what I see in Small Steps Back to You are rock star women just caught in their current reality, trying to make changes, trying to do things differently, but coming up against themselves. And, you know, and it's, and it's, and it's, and it's the stories, it's the beliefs that we all have. And so I've been learning really cool ways to help um, shift those beliefs when I see people with them. So, ah, so much cool stuff coming for you. Uh, reinvented podcast and, um, and like working on the TV set and all of that kind of stuff. That just seems to be taking a bit longer. So I might just get the interviews started on the podcast because I hate inaction and I prefer to get stuff happening even if it's imperfect. Uh, and I've got so many ideas. But um, there will always be, you know, the practical ways to work with me and uh, and get some of the shifts that I've been having. And if you're not registered for the Me Time webinar tomorrow night, you might want to do that because it'll be awesome, where I basically show you exactly how to create hours in your in your week and, you know, start to, to dive deeper on our, um, our hyper-connection but our complete and utter disconnection from ourselves. We are so disconnected from ourselves. 
we've got no idea who we are or what we want anymore. And I think that because most of us want other people to feel happy, most of us are givers, most of us are interested in the people around us feeling really good, we can just keep ourselves locked away. And that's not what I want for, for you. That's not the way it should go. So tonight I shared stories of, of a friend who's totally making up stories about how her husband might react uh, and when because she, she wants to go away on a trip, all made up stories. He's probably going to be like, this sounds amazing, go for it. And if he doesn't and if he's like, what? Well, sh they'll find a solution because we need to honour the, the drive, the callings within us. We just do. Um, oh, that's so funny, Carly. I joined the membership for food. I've been obsessed since, since about all the things. <laughs> Back to you, community, food, brains, growth. Yes, do it all. Oh, Carly, it's so fun having you in there. Um, that's awesome. Uh, but... Um, yeah, and then I and I shared the story, uh, the personal story of Nick and I, where I was kind of feeling all the good feels, he was really not, and I needed to make a decision. Like, what do I do here? Do I just kind of stay here and just try to make things better? Which would never have worked. I did try it quite a lot. I was like, I just got to go on with my good self, and I just got to trust that that this happens. But do you know what does definitely happen? You know. As we grow into ourselves, as we shed our stories about what's possible for us, as we shed stories that just keep us small and on the freaking hamster wheel of this overwhelmed, chaotic, horribly stressful life, eating unhealthy food, never exercising, once we start to shed that stuff, it's really triggering for friends and family to see you doing great. We wish it wasn't so, but it is. And my wish for you is that you just keep going anyway, remembering that humans judge. Humans are judgment-making machines. Like I have a business on social media. I've had to get cool with the fact that humans judge. You will be judged. But what are you going to do? Honour you or the people around you who are dealing with their own stories that are coming up? Their stories are the ones that are making you not do the things that you want to do. Can you see how messed up that is? So you need to just go on with your good self. You just need to keep going forward. You need to keep taking strides. You need to keep shedding those stories. When they come up, a truth that you think is a truth, you just recognise it for what it is and then you choose whether it's time to let that story go. It's like, what, how? Huh? I always thought I could never blah, blah. Hang on a minute. Where did that even come from? Oh, it came from that back in grade three when blah, blah said blah, blah. Oh, holy shit, I've changed since then. Maybe that story doesn't serve me anymore. Goodbye story. Thanks for coming into my conscious mind. I dealt with you. You're gone. It's everything that sits under the surface. It's everything that's in our subconscious that is actually driving our life. And when we can kind of go, hang on a minute, why Why is this my autopilot? Why is that my always my reaction? Um, why does this trigger me every time? Dig into that stuff. That is where the gold is. When you remove that stuff out of your life, you are so much freer. And your freedom will trigger other people. But what are you going to do? I wish I could hear you. It's going to keep going. That's what you're going to do. Uh, because you deserve an amazing life is what I have to say. So um, that went for a lot longer than I thought it was going to go for. And things totally died on Instagram for the poor Instagrammers. But I hope that that has been helpful. I hope that... Uh, when other people get triggered by you being amazing, that you'll know exactly what to do. So uh, next week we will have the final uh, episode in the series, which is going to be the story that this isn't possible for me. Mm. 
you know like how all the good things can happen for everybody else and never you we're gonna bust that story it's gonna be super fun and it's going to be Wednesday night, 8.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time. But you need to get registered for the Replace Online Time with Me Time webinar. There is so much more goodness where this came from. It's a really practical workshop. You will absolutely love it. People sometimes cry uh, and then they feel really good. So don't worry, I won't leave you crying. And very, very soon, the doors to Small Steps Back to You will be open where you can deep dive on this stuff with me as your coach for um, for five weeks. So, oh, thanks, dudes. Um, um, I've been fab for the past five or six months. Hopefully that's just because that's when you discovered me, Maria. <laughs> or maybe like something shifted in me in the last five or six months. Um, so good. Awesome. Thanks for being here, Tammy and beautiful Karen. Love you guys. I'll um I'll be in touch soon. Stay true to you, bust through your stories, and I'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>